Okay, I've saved the work. I've done um, color adjustments on every layer I think was necessary. The one I didn't adjust was the sky behind. And that actually might be worth doing too. And that's going to be pretty dramatic. So instead of, of doing color balance, I'm just going to go right to hue saturation and play with the master settings and see if, yeah, slightly kind of bluish, more evening sky makes sense. And I can intensify it a little bit. I can darken it or I can lighten it. I think I want to lighten it a little bit, but intensify it. As it blends with the kind of uh, mountain mists coming off of those. All right. I can always go back in my history and see if I like that better or worse. I like it okay. I'm going to put a little bit more yellow into it by going to color balance in the midtones, putting some green in. Yeah, I think that works. All right. Now I want to troubleshoot. So you can tell that these rocks are from different layers, not just because of this edge, which I want to clean up. And a way I can do that is finding that layer. Which is right here. Taking my lasso, turning the feather on, I'm going to try three pixels. This is how you can soften a little bit. And just deleting once. And that might be a little soft with three pixels. Let's try just one pixel feather. because I want it sharp, but I also want it smoother than it is. Yeah, so that, that gives me a nice edge. And just where the edge is a little discolored because I didn't quite get all of the background, I can kind of cut in with that feather because they're organic, not man-made. I can even kind of cut into it a little bit and that's fine. But then there are some other tricks too. And these have to do with uh, ways of adjusting the lighting with tools rather than overall with direct adjustments. So these tools are called the dodge and burn tools and they're based on uh, photography tools in the dark room. And what they allow you to do is basically darken selective pixels and lighten selective pixels. So to darken pixels where you push, it's called the burn tool to kind of burn them in, make them a darker exposure. And to lighten them is called the dodge tool to kind of expose around them. So after I've done my kind of smoothing cutouts, since I have the colors now adjusted and I can get the exact edge. And foreground elements like these rocks, people are really going to pay attention to that edge quality in the prints. And then for for the next set of rocks at the back here, I have a little bit of a, an edge ghosting problem. I 
And so I'll use that same setting and refine that edge. But by waiting until now to do this, notice I'm not uh, ever doing it too much. I'm only paying attention to what actually shows in the composition that I desire. And this edge is a little wonky, so I'm going to go ahead and redraw that. It's where I was compositing things together, taking things out. Hmm. Keeps being bumpy. Why is that? <laughs> Okay, there we go. Okay, Command plus zooms in, Command minus zooms out, Command zero will just fit it all on the screen, no matter where you are. Okay, so I've got the edges. Now I want to use some direct lighting. And one thing I notice is that um, it feels like there should be more shading between this hill and this. So I'm going to go to this hill, which is cut out nicely, but I want to add a little bit of shading there. And that's going to be with the burn tool. So you're going to find it on top of the text tool, this drawer, dodge, burn, and sponge. I'm going to start with burn. I'm going to go to the midtones, always dodge and burn on the midtones. And I'm going to do an exposure of less than 30. So 17 is good. I'm also going to use a brush similar to how I erased away from the sky. That's large and 0% hardness. And as I start clicking and brushing over it, it's just going to darken the midtones. It's at a low setting, but you'll see that it makes a big difference. You can see that in my history, I've used the burn tool now six times, kind of painting over that. And why isn't it looking like it's making more of a difference? <laughs> Let's see. Make sure I don't have it selected somewhere because it will only burn where you've selected. Let's try again. Midtones, 17%. Yeah, it's doing it. I think I must have had something selected. Okay, so now when I work on top of it, you're going to see that it starts to build the darkness a little bit. That helps separate those. There we go. Now, what if I want a little bit more highlight on the top? of that little mound. Well, that is the dodge tool. So I'm going to use all the same settings, midtones, less than 30, nice, soft, large brush. 0% hardness is important. Otherwise, you start getting these little uh, tool marks where you've worked on it. And I'm just going to hit the ledge and just brighten the midtones a little bit on the edge. So you can see that edge was pretty dark before. Now I've brightened it quite a bit. And if I need to, I can always go and burn again. If I felt like I lost a little bit of shadow where I wanted it. Separating those two. Good time to save. Now I can think, how can I use dodge and burn on these other foreground layers? Especially on these rocks. I think I want to really bring out the highlights a little bit. So I'm going to use dodge, which is the one that brightens. I'm just going to hit the tops. of some of these. And 
and you can go back in your history to see the difference because it's it moves slowly enough it's a powerful tool but it moves slowly enough it can be hard to tell so that kept the shadows deep here in the crevice but it brightened some of the highlights to blend a little bit better and now i can go to my foreground rocks and hit those top highlights a little bit with dodge And more importantly, I think deepen some of the foreground shadows with burn. And we'll be playing with this a lot more with our creatures that we do in the next assignment. And then especially when we put our creatures into our environments, we usually have to burn a shadow underneath them. Now the reason I only use it on midtones is because if you burn on shadows, then you immediately get to black and then you lose any pixel definition. And if you dodge on highlights, you immediately get to white and you lose pixel definition. And I can also shrink my tool for burning to do kind of more specific texture work. So like on on this kind of strange formation that I built out of compositing. I'm now going to use a smaller brush size. And I'm just going to darken some of these textural elements more selectively. Now you'll notice that when I do that, they get a little bit more saturated, more intense in color. And sometimes that can be good, especially if you want that, and in my case, that kind of helps with what I'm going for. But that's where the sponge tool comes in, because it can get too colorful when you're burning sometimes, or too desaturated when you're dodging. I'll burn these down too. So the sponge tool is a direct adjustment tool or not a direct adjustment tool, is a tool that's like the direct adjustment for hue saturation, but you can target it, you know, just like I've been dodging and burning. So this is how it works. It is underneath the burn tool. It's called the sponge tool. And you set it to either saturate, which means make the colors more intense, or to desaturate, make them less intense. And then based on the flow, you get to control it. And I do it at about 20% with a large soft brush. So where should I take the color down a little? Right there. Right here. So this won't lighten or darken it, but it will take down the intensity of the color. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't want that. But it just shows how much control you have. And if it's going too strong, you can always take that flow down to something less. Oops. All right. I'll take down some of the color saturation in the shadow, just in spots. It's a little monochrome. Okay, now with my foreground, I might choose to saturate a little bit, get more color in certain places. But it goes pretty fast. 